Thor News is the record holder for Stellar Cool. Doom, 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 This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2014, Q-2, Love, Joy, Part 5, It's Alive. What knocked it into its orbit? What got it hot, shall we say? We're talking about C-2014. QE, I love joy. I do. Remember, parent magnitude's like golf. The lower the score, the better the number. Can you see it at 10? No. Can you see it at 9? No. Can you see it at 8? Nope. Can you see it at 7? No siri Bob. Somewhere between 6.5 and 7, the human eye can see it. Hey, guess what? I'm back. I am the Indiana Jones of pseudo-astronomy. And here we go. All right, it is now time for a Thor News Bare Bones Breakdown. Right now, it's at a magnitude of 8. It is predicted to reach a 5.0 magnitude in the middle of January. Why am I talking to you about it now? Because it is at a 6.5 apparent magnitude on December 13, 2014. Currently, shining at a magnitude 5.5, Q2 Lovejoy is a fine target for binoculars. Comet Lovejoy brightens. It's official. Comet Lovejoy C2014 Q2 is now a naked eye object. Science journalist and longtime comet watcher Mariano reports that as of last night, Comet Lovejoy has reached magnitude 5.0, just above the threshold for human visibility from dark sky sites. Ladies and gentlemen, I interrupt my own video to announce it has been spotted at a 4.6 magnitude. The latest we've gotten is right here, 4.5. So that's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I interrupt my own video again to report the comet Q2 Lovejoy is now at a 4.4 apparent magnitude of brightness. This puppy is brightening fast and getting so exciting. Can you feel it? The photographs have been just incredible, and from all over the world, and from different people. Comet hunting is fun and easy. Well, I don't know about that. Super impressive comets seem to come around about once every hundred years or so, especially in strange times. Happy New Year, and welcome to 2015, the year humanity makes its big choice, which will then begin to manifest itself in 2017. So Godspeed, everyone. I ask that you filleth up your cup with good energy, love, kindness, and forgiveness. Though don't let anybody walk all over you. What a difference one year makes, eh? Last year, I was totally heartbroken, jaded, and angry about Comet C-2012 S1 Asin and its snafu bar Schadenfried. Comet Asin is alive. Comet Asin is dead. Comet Asin is alive. Comet Asin is undead. What is the deal, man? Once again, let me apologize for Comet Ison. I was totally responsible for it being a failure of a comet. And this year, I am totally excited by the incredible Comet Lovejoy. The incredible tale of Comet Lovejoy at spaceweather.com. Warning, looking at this picture might cause you to buy a telescope. Behold bright Comet Lovejoy C2014 Q2, photographed by amateur astronomer Gerald Raymond. On December 23rd. That was nine days ago, people. Raymond used a 12 inch remotely controlled telescope and Nam It Bia photographed the comet on December 23rd. Lovejoy's sinuous blue tail was so long, more than six degrees of arc, he couldn't fit it into a single field of view. I had to combine six frames, he says. In fact, it is even too big for this web page. Click on the truncated tail above to see the whole thing. He took the picture more than a week ago, and the comet is significantly brighter. Observers around the world are saying they can see it with the unaided eye from dark sky sites. The comet is shining like a fifth magnitude star and is expected to double in brightness by mid-January. And is expected to double in brightness by mid-January. To the naked eye, it looks like a green fuzzball. Mid-sized backyard telescopes reveal the comet's magnificent blue tail. Observers should look for the comet passing through the constellation Lepus, the hare south of Orion. Consult these finder charts from Sky Telescope for accurate pointing of telescopes. I'm going to use this video to show you where to look. Hopefully you know where Orion is. It's my favorite constellation because Orion's the only man in the sky. Okay, so before when I, I was looking for it, it was south here. I guess now on the 31st, it's more over here. 
So look under his left knee. I'm sorry. Look under his left knee, a little south of Sirius. And you should be able to find it. It's impressive already by anyone's standards. Which means it's only like 100 days old in our eyes. Discovered 17th August 24th by Terry Lovejoy. Using his 8 inches and a Schmidt Cassie Grain telescope. It was discovered at an apparent magnitude of 15 in the southern constellation of Puppis. It is the fifth comet discovered by Terry Lovejoy. And many will remember how Comet C-2011 W3 Lovejoy also survived a perilous perihelion passage just 1,400,000 kilometers from the surface of the sun during the 2011 holiday season and went on to produce a brilliant display. Yeah, and that kind of messed up the dirty snowball theory because snowballs aren't going to make it that close to the sun without melting, you know? One of the things I was reading was saying that this comet has been in our solar system before. Like, really, dude? It's got an orbit of 11,000 years, which is a very Sedna-like orbit. And you're going to tell me, been here before? All right. It'll be at its closest approach to Earth on January 7th. It'll be 0.469 astronomical units. And its distance from the sun will be 1337. So is this our new comet of the century? Remember, the century's pretty young, so, you know, like... So keep your eyes in the skies, and I'll stay on top of the story. Sweet. Interesting fact, the maximum brightness dwarf planet Ceres is allowed to have, which is in the asteroid belt, is a 6.64. And Ceres is 2.77 astronomical units away from Earth. Word them up, word them out. I'm out. Crap. Oh, hey, how you doing? I love you. I'm Captain Happy Comet Ice and Cupcakes, baby. Space underwear in your face, 